Hello, my friends. How are you all on this beautiful fall day? Today, we're going to be discussing a fascinating topic, growth versus comfort. And it's so interesting. One of the things that motivates us as human beings is this belief that we should always feel good. I think we've talked about this before, always feel comfortable. But what does that really then mean for our lives? Because everything we do in life is because we want to feel a certain way or we want to avoid certain emotions. But here's, here's where I'm going to challenge all of us in our thinking. Humans don't grow only by pursuing pleasure and comfort, right? We humans grow strong and resilient in the midst of uncertainty, discomfort, pain, but also with new challenges, things we've never done before. But it's understandable then, isn't it, why so many of us become creatures of habit? For so many people, they want to prioritize the familiar, what feels safe and comfortable. I get that. You know the story. You come home from work, you kick your shoes off, you grab the chips, the wine, the phone, the remote, you head right for the couch. But it is interesting how escapism in all of its various forms is our attempt to reside within our safe and sealed comfort zones. We just really don't want to think too much, do we? However, isn't this a beautiful slide? This beautiful butterfly in her cocoon. She's so comfortable in her little home, like a baby who's just so happy and cozy in her mama's womb. She doesn't want to leave that cocoon. But the comfort zone is the enemy of growth. And if she doesn't leave, Look at what she's missing, right? A breakthrough. She's now a stunning, beautiful, free butterfly able to roam at will. A breakthrough into real freedom. The butterfly can fly because she built up the necessary strength by breaking through her cocoon, right? She left the couch. But we as humans can't really grow or gain anything valuable in life by staying in the coon, cocoon and doing the same things over and over. We have to learn how to break through as well, don't we? And only when we decide to push outside of it and really get off that couch and break out of that cocoon, do we experience real growth and a fuller version of what God desires for our lives. Now, I think this is just important to be aware of because our everyday routines determine the quality of our life, our habits, our normal routines, if you will, need to be something that we decide to honestly look at, to truly consider. There's this great quote that speaks to this very topic. People do not decide their futures, they decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. Powerful, right? And this is just the absolute truth. You see, familiarity and comfort give us a sense that we can predict the future. We feel like, you know, we're more in control. We feel safer because we know what the next day will hold. And it's this notion that ironically, gives us a false sense of security. So what do we need to do when we decide to get off the couch, when we are actually ready to change our lives? Well, we first have to realize that we've been stuck in what I love to refer to as our primal brains all that time while we were on that couch. So we're going to get some real pushback. And just to review with you for a second, our primal brain, remember, is that part of the brain that doesn't want us to try something new. Uh-uh, just prefers to stay in the cave. It wants us to stay safe. It doesn't encourage us to try something new or risky or unknown or, God forbid, awkward or uncertain. That's what it was originally 
program to do. In the caveman days, it was all about staying near the fire to ward off danger. But here's the thing. If, if we're going to change our lives, we have to learn to go to this new place of uncertainty and discomfort. We have to learn to override our primal brains. Because for actual growth, you have to get out of your routine. And you will need to learn to get excited about the great unknown in order to make the positive changes in your life. And you know what else? I've told you this one before, but I love it. Discomfort? Discomfort is a currency of our dreams. Yep, it's <laughs> read it again. Discomfort is a currency of our dreams. I know some of you might be wincing a little bit at this, and I had to let that one slowly seep in when I first heard it, but I know now it to be complete truth. Discomfort needs to become our friend. I want you to guys to think about this for a minute. So on one end of the spectrum, it feels so good to be in the familiar, right? It feels good to stay the same for many of us. I get that. But then on the other end of the spectrum lies momentum and growth and feeling proud of yourself, that sense of accomplishment. Let's think for a moment about the example. I was trying to think of a good example. And the one that came to mind was losing weight. And it mainly because that's pretty common for many of us. You know, we often want to lose weight and get back to our goal weight. But that path to success sometimes can be really difficult. It's very easy to give up. We want to keep going back to the everyday familiar routine and comfort food, right? I don't know about you, but past routines and habits die hard for me. But let's just say, for example, throughout a number, you weigh 180 pounds and your habits have supported that weight, right? It's a predictable number that comes with a lifestyle that you've adopted. However, in order to change that, to say, I don't know, weigh 150 pounds, you have to then align yourself with that new emotion that'll help you get there, right? We have to go to that place of determination, discomfort, right? Discipline to get out of our old routines, habits, and patterns. And this goes for anything new that we are trying, not just weight. But I hear this kind of pushback a lot from my clients. Well, this is kind of exhausting. I don't know. This is hard. This really requires too much effort. And I say to them, look, it's because you have to break your bond with the comfort and familiarity that you've gotten so used to. Some of the things that are, are really key here are the concepts around ability and willingness. And think about both of those, your ability and your willingness to be uncomfortable, right? To feel discomfort, to, to feel negative emotions. Being willing to go toward those emotions will determine the amount of success that you have in your life. Because if you're only willing to stay in the comfort lane and you're not willing to go through the discomfort to build a new future, then your future will just be more the same. Yes, comfortable. Yes, familiar. But you will also be experiencing complacency and, and maybe even regret. Wondering to yourself, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I try harder? Now, we've all, all seen people in our worlds who do not truly desire change. They just kind of keep repeating the same things over and over. They have the same thoughts. They have the same feelings. They take the same actions and they get the same results, right? Year after year after year. But we've also all seen those people that have changed their thinking. They've changed their feelings, their emotions, right? and their actions, and you actually see all their results. And you say to them, wow, how'd you do that? And they'll tell you, well, yeah, yeah, it was hard work, it was challenging, but I made a decision and I went for it. And they're usually quite proud of themselves as they should be. I mean, very rarely will you see somebody 
in the weight example, lose 30 pounds and say, oh, that was a breeze. I didn't have to do anything. It was nothing. It's not true. A lot went into that mentally and physically. And I see you. Uh, that needs to be celebrated, I think. They did the work and got out of their comfort zone. And this example just applies to so many of life's opportunities. And another thing, I think a lot of times people will think that they're allowing themselves to just be comfortable, allowing themselves to stay in the familiar because they believe it's a form of self-care and they can become a little firm and righteous about it. But I just want to say to them, is it? Is it really? Now, <laughs> before we go any further, if you have been through hell and back with different challenges as of late, of course, you would want to allow yourself this grace, that downtime. And I'm I'm not for any second talking about recovery or rest or self-care during a challenging time. Not at all. What I'm talking about here is the sameness and the uh, ambivalence that can just sneak into our everyday and I think approaching every day like that is not paying attention to the gifts that God has given you. And I think that as, as long as you're dwelling in comfort, you're not creating your own unique life with intention and deliberateness. One might say you're not evolving. Now, look, I know that might sound righteous to you coming from me. But I want to ask you, are you moving toward the future version of what you could be? Are you considering your future self? Often people stall. Sometimes people are afraid. Perhaps you're waiting. But then I would say to you as a coach, but for what? The perfect moment? Now, right but now, you might be thinking, well, I don't know, Leanne, I don't know if I'm even doing this. I mean, how do I know? Well, look, you have to take a look at the results in your life right now. And then ask yourself, are the results you have the ones that you really, really want? Are you currently creating your life on purpose? Or are you just taking from what you've already created in your past? I mean, some people are living a life that they created in their youth, perhaps even in their 20s, right? They haven't made any real changes. And that kind of just, I don't know, that breaks my heart because are they really living to their full potential? What are they missing out on? Now, many of you might be saying, all right, you know, I'm kind of irritated with you right now, Leanne. I don't desire any change. I'm good. I'm very comfortable with where I'm at. And just let me say that if you are conscious and content with your life, that is so beautiful. That's fantastic. Truly. However, you are really not who I'm truly talking to. I am talking to that person that has that nagging in their soul. That person that knows that there is something more. Many people come to me wanting to feel better than they do, and they want to go to that next level. And for those that take on the work, this healthy mind management work that I have been encouraging all to do, it's so fun to see them soar, to just get so excited about their one precious life. It's interesting, though, many people come to me, but they are kind of hedging around whether or not they want to work together. I get it. That was me back in the day. They are unwilling to have that uh, uncomfortable beginning. They're a little scared to take a look at themselves, which is really just such a shame because I believe that their new normal could be so exciting. I believe that really understanding what you want in your life is so key. And then visualizing who you will become is a big part of it as well. And in order to evolve, you must understand that there, there will be some awkwardness, some uncertainty, some unknowing, some struggles, and perhaps even a feeling of 
being out of control along the way. But you know what? So what? I just want to say be willing to be awkward. Be willing to be a beginner. Be willing to suck at it long enough so you can get to that other side. And I also want to say, remember, it's not supposed to feel amazing all the time. Do you all remember this concept of the 50-50 that I've been trying to really get into your soul? Life is 50-50 good and bad, and it's not always going to feel comfortable. And I think we also have to ask ourselves, what is at risk if we don't go for our dreams? Well, I believe that playing it safe and small can create a life of disappointment and regret. Many people believe that there's a big risk to taking a risk, but really, I believe there is a risk in not taking a risk. We must learn to just embrace and lean into our fear and embrace vulnerability and then Muster up the courage to make mistakes, to look foolish, to fall short, to risk rejection. And we must learn to do this in our lifetime over and over and over again, kind of a rinse and repeat. Now, I want you to remember when you do this, your primal brain will not love this. It will be saying, maybe screaming at you, run for the hills, go back to the cave. That saber tooth is on its way. Run to safety. Don't risk it. Not worth it. But, but it's right in these moments that we need to access the more logical part of our brain, which is the prefrontal cortex. That's the, what I refer to as the grown up part of our brain. This is the part of our brain that loves a cha challenge. It loves to create, it, it loves to plan, it loves to evolve. And you'll know when you're using that part of your brain because it just feels fantastic. You get so much done. You've all had days like that. You're like, wow, look at me today. You're very creative. But what's probably the most important thing that I can say to you today, it's so, so important and powerful. When you realize that you have both parts of your brain competing for your attention. Yes. Two parts of your brain constantly competing for your attention and that you have a choice as to which one you will access. And I'm telling you, once you start to be truly aware of this, <laughs> you will be so amused by all of the excuses that your primal brain will come up with to keep you on the couch. <laughs> I'm telling you. But in today's world, seriously, we are bombarded 24 seven, right? With a myriad of reasons to be fearful and afraid. And I would imagine that our primal brain is showing up more often than not for most people. But that should not keep us from going for our dreams. In our discernment, we don't want to steer away from the very risks that would help us grow, to learn, to expand our futures. And here's one more thing. Being comfortable, well, that just doesn't really stay comfortable forever either. When we choose the easy route over the brave one, we're really depriving ourselves of learning new skills and discovering a newfound strength, building resilience and unlocking the potential that may be laying dormant within us. Think of it this way. God gives us choices. This is what I believe. It's called free will. And we can continue on the road of familiarity and sameness if we choose or follow the road of intention and potential. And deciding which of these roads to travel is the decision that we face every single day. I'd love you to think back for over your life just for a moment. And remember, think back on the times when you felt least comfortable. And it might have been by choice or not. But can you remember the good things 
that came out of being uncomfortable. Now I'd like you to think about the person you could possibly become in five to 10 years, even a year from now. I mean, who could you become? Have you ever asked yourself this? The life you create will be in proportion to the courage of the decisions and the habits you create between now and then. Once again, creating a, a life of contribution and connection and faith will require embracing our new favorite word, discomfort, again and again and over and over and over, really. You know, Nelson Mandela once said, there is no passion to be found playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. I really couldn't agree with you more, Mr. Mandela. And here's another thing, and I just, I have to get this in. It's never too late to shake it up and make a change care how old you are i mean you know society will tell you differently don't listen to them and if you're if you think you're too young oh just stop it <laughs> i want you to go for it i want you to connect with whatever vision is tugging at your heart at any age so in closing i really would say to you if if this is kind of getting you fired up listen to it again if this is resonating with you, you, you'll know who you are because I want you to breathe in the faith of your potential. And I want you to just exhale out all of that unnecessary fear. And if you have a dream of growth over comfort, I want you to take that first step and then just take another and then another. I promise you that here's the thing, small steps really, really add up. It's the compound effect. And most importantly, just have fun with this. And remember, it's a privilege to be on this earth, to learn what we're supposed to learn in our lifetime. I want you to go for it. I believe you're going to really enjoy getting to know the person you become on your journey of growth. In closing, there's this marvelous saying it was a child and they're talking to their mom and he says, oh, but mom, what if I fail? And she says, oh, but my darling, what if you fly? I want you to run with that. You've been listening to Champion Your Life with me, Leanne Champion. Please connect. Reach out, schedule a discovery call with me. I'd love to work with you. You can find me at leannechampioncoaching.com, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or simply just type in champion your life. I look forward to the next time we're together. Godspeed. Thank you for listening to Champion Your Life with me. Leanne Champion on TransformationTalkRadio.com. To find out more about me and my coaching platform, visit ChampionYourLife.com. That's ChampionYourLife.com. You have one precious life. Let's live it to your fullest potential. Let's go. Let's do this together. See you next time.